I'm Daniel Madison and this is The Swing Change. Charlie, 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 rock. Today is gonna be a good day, my friend. I can feel it in my something. I'm gonna teach a color change, Charlie. I'm gonna teach a transformation. You take the nine of clubs, I snap my fingers like Thanos, and the nine of clubs becomes the king of diamonds right at your fingertips, Charlie. Do you understand how important this is? It's like real magic, man. It's like real magic. I've got a feeling in my something that the participant is gonna respond accordingly. People are gonna like this one, man. People are gonna like it. It looks beautiful, feels beautiful to perform. And the deceptive method behind it is intricately beautiful. I'm Daniel Madison. You know this. You're Charlie Madison. I know this. Let's get to it. All right, boy. Come on. Come on. You'll be all right. I'll take you to the hardware store. The magician takes a deck of playing cards and rudely interrupts somebody at a restaurant. Excuse me. 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 Can I help you? What are you doing? What What is that? Is that a cup of frozen sausages? Yes. The magician then takes the nine of clubs and at the snap of his fingers, the nine of clubs magically becomes the king of diamonds. Is this the playing card that you were thinking of? The deck of cards and the king of diamonds are then handed out instantly where they can be inspected so that the participant can respond accordingly. Please leave immediately before I call the police. I'm Daniel Madison and this is The Swing Change. The bloody nerve of the man coming into my restaurant with a, a gambling equipment trying to steal my sausages. I am Daniel Madison, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Thanks for choosing to spend a little bit more time with me and Charlie Madison today. We both appreciate it. Welcome to the Madison Show. Ha, this one's a banger. This one's gonna be a good one. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the swing change. This is a color change, a transformation. What does that mean, Daniel Madison? You take the nine of clubs, snap your fingers like Thanos, that nine of clubs instantly becomes the king of diamonds. And I'm gonna teach you intricately all the mechanics and everything I know about this color change. I created this color change many moons ago. I even published it on this channel. I'll leave a link to the original video in this description. The reason I wanted to teach it again is because I've updated the mechanics and the way that I think about this color change. And instead of sharing the, a, a trick like the similar ones that I've taught you recently the past three, I wanted to teach you something that's a little bit more mechanically challenging. This one, in terms of sleight of hand, is quite difficult. But with practice and with, with good practice and with dedication, you can make this look really easy. Uh, we'll get into all the intricate details and all the theory afterwards. But to start with, I think it's best that we go straight to the mechanics and learn the slight hand technique that allows you to achieve this color change that I call the swing change. So we'll look at the mechanics first and then we'll talk about everything else, including a cup of frozen sausages. I'm Daniel Madison, welcome to The Swing Change. Take any two playing cards and put them on the top of the deck. In my case, the Nine of Clubs is my favorite card. The King of Diamonds actually has my face on it, as well as a cool little Nine of Clubs reveal in his palm. I take the Nine of Clubs and the King of Diamonds, they go on top of the deck, and now I'm ready to go. I'm good to go. Now, here's what's happening. I wanna expose everything right from the beginning, right from the start, so you know exactly what's going on. I lift up two playing cards like so, at the back like this. The deck is gripped uh, in a normal kind of grip like this. They call this the mechanics grip. I call it the Madison grip. My thumb, thank you, Charlie. My thumb is making contact with the top left corner here on the back. It's very important that my thumb is 
is right on the corner right here. That's one important note. I pulled two two cards, two playing cards apart, so I have nine of clubs and a king of diamonds together. Finger three is kind of holding them in place. This is just my get ready. This means I'm ready to go. So before you even do this, you can get into this position and get ready to go. So I lift the deck up like so. I want to hold the deck dead straight on, flat on like this to my participant, to my audience. I want them to see exactly this, no other angles. By the way, this, this is quite angle sensitive and it comes with problems that we're gonna talk about after I've shown you the mechanics. So don't worry about anything. Look, get the hell off of me. We're gonna talk about things like that after. Right now, let's just look at the mechanics. So I'm ready to go. I lift the deck up so that people can see straight on, flat on like so, my thumb still here. What I do now, I come down to this corner, down to the bottom right corner with my free hand, finger two, now can pivot those two playing cards like so to look like one this looks like one playing card obviously two playing cards now this is the most important grip the most important thing you need to know about this move the thumb is here finger two here i can now pivot and maneuver and move those two playing cards as one like so so the first move is that the first move is pivoting up here so that it's kind of on top of the deck a lateral position from here, I'm going to pinch those two playing cards on the back with my thumb. This allows me to separate these two cards from the deck. I hold them very tightly together so that they don't separate. So, in position, move one up here, pinch. I only pinch so that I can reposition my thumb. I don't want to take the card away. I can take the card away, we'll go over that afterwards. Uh, but right now, I just want to show you the mechanics. I come up here, I pinch. I now need to reposition my thumb. Here's what it looks like from my angle here. Reposition my thumb. I'm gonna make sure that this corner is on top of this corner. I'll get as close as I can for you. About here. So that it's kind of acts like a hinge. The thumb now pinches those two playing cards to the top of the deck. Now it's very important that you don't press down with loads of pressure. You wanna hold them very ever so gently, just enough so that they don't fall and slide away. I'm not, I'm not pressing down with any kind of pressure. It's just literally just a, I hate the word literally. It's actually just to hold them in place. So here's what that looks like from here, up here. Thumb goes on position. I can now let go with this hand. So they're the first few moves. Swing up, reposition, I now can let go. I uh, don't need to overexpose this hand, but at this point I let go with this hand and leave the deck and the card in this position. So from all angles, there's nothing to see yet. There's no trickery going on. There's no deceptions at the, at the minute. At this point, I'm gonna do this. I'll show you from the front first. I'm gonna kind of gesture with this hand that something's about to happen. This is what it looks like. Once it's up here, this hand comes away and maybe I rub my th my fingers and I come in like this so my thumb goes behind the cards apparently. Now I'm in position to click but as you can see I've actually put my thumb in between the cards. So I go like this, here, here, peel the top card back with my finger, with finger one. My thumb curls underneath. I can now let go with finger one and allow this card to sit on the back of my thumb like so. I'm now in position for the actual snap. Now all that I need to do now is snap a finger two with the thumb. If you can't snap, there's gonna be a problem. Learn how to snap first. So from here, pull back finger one, thumb goes in the gap, I come over here. Now I snap my fingers, making sure that I hit this corner with finger two, like so. You see what happens, the hinge that we set up already the nine of clubs is allowed to swing down out of place. In snapping, your hand naturally moves out of the way, allowing that king of diamonds to snap forward into position. So it looks like this. Once it's down, once the card has swung down, I'll show you what that looks like from the back. Once that card is all the way down, in fact, I don't think I was in focus then. Once that card is all the way down, I quickly, not quickly, but, but almost instantly without rushing, I grab that King of Diamonds and take it away from the deck. 
Matt can show both sides and hand everything out for inspection. No need to hide this. If you want to hide that nine of clubs, if you're worried about people looking at the top card and figuring it out, there's a very simple idea where you pivot the card up here, pull the top card down a little bit, and then move, maneuver it on top of those two playing cards so that the two playing cards are now behind the top card so that now when you execute the swing change this card nine of clubs is going to swing underneath the top card and then you can turn the top card over and show that the nine really has gone i think this is running uh, without being changed i think it's a bad idea but nonetheless i need to suggest it also there's another idea where you can have those two playing cards on the bottom of the deck so that when you turn them over like this turn two cards over as one on the bottom you can then execute this swing change like this so that they're looking at the back of the deck now the reason i, I like to do this sometimes is when i lift up here i move the bottom card out of the way and put these two cards behind it so they're now behind the ace of spades now when i execute the swing change the nine disappears into the deck and i'm left with the king what this allows me to do is this visual now becomes obvious they're looking at the back of the deck if i execute the swing change here and somebody reverse engineers tries to figure it out i can simply before they even ask pull the king down, move the deck down like this, and show that the nine of clubs has actually vanished. Once again, a really quick run over of the, of the mechanics. Uh, hold two cards together, the thumb causes the pivot. I pivot the cards up, pinch them in place so that they're repositioned, peel the, the back card back with finger one, the thumb goes in between, snap my fingers, pull the king away, the snap change, the, <laughs> the swing change with the Thanos snap has been achieved. Let's talk about this a bit. Now this one is gonna take a lot of practice, a lot of time in front of a mirror. And in front of that mirror, you're gonna figure out all of the bad angles. Now, I apologize. This is probably not the best color change transformation to start with on this channel because it's so angle sensitive and I'm not a fan. I don't really like promoting things that have such problems not problems challenges as this one there's so many challenges when it comes to that angle so and another thing that i'm not a fan of doing and you won't find me find me doing a lot but when you're going to perform this i i recommend i suggest that you try to only ever do it maybe on film just for your camera just for a bit of fun if you're going to do it for an audience or for for somebody up close make sure you're not stood too close to them and that's really really bad thing for me to suggest as a, as a teacher um, because magic you should be able to do it without all these constraints without all these rules unfortunately as beautiful as this color change looks because it, ha it happens instantly right at the fingertips it looks like you're not even holding that playing card when it's up here this looks so beautiful the problem with it is is the angle the angles are pretty bad the angles are pretty bad and from every moment like from the start this you're all good at this point you're all good at but up until here now as soon as i peel this card back i'm gonna worry about what people can see as soon as i pull it back if i tilt a little bit this way you can see this card over the top if i go to this side you can see at the back or this side unless you're dead on at the very specific angle it's pretty hard to get away with this I mean, you might want to stand as far away as you can from the audience behind uh, some smoked glass. <laughs> or if you're a vapor, take a, a big hit of, of, of uh, sausage juice and then spit it out all over the cards to hide it in that vape smoke. I think that's how it works. And then when the vape happens, then achieve the, uh, the swing change. And I feel bad for saying all this, but, but I have to be honest. I have to be brutally honest about the slide itself. For me, I came up with this with the intention to only ever do it on film and to only ever do it on videos like this so as for doing it in front of people i i can't say i've honestly done it that much in front of people for real magicians and sleight of hand guys love this and they appreciate it but as a real performing trick it's not it's not the best um nonetheless the reason i wanted to share it on this channel and give it to you i need to start challenging you more with more intricate sleight of hand with mechanics that are more difficult than just something that's self-working or something that just maybe is a little bit clever or intelligent that doesn't require too much sleight of hand. I wouldn't say that this one's very slight heavy, but still the mechanics are pretty, pretty
pretty sharp, pretty, you've got to be pretty on point to get this right. There are a lot of places where this can go wrong also. Uh, as specifically when the card is up here, when the two cards are up here. At this point you might want to feel like rushing so that nobody sees the angles, but then you're just drawing attention to the fact that something fishy, something sausagey is going on and you don't want to draw too much attention. Once you're up here and you've peeled that top card back and the thumbs inside here, and, and by the way, use the comment section and let me know, maybe you've already figured out a better way to do this, a better way to get, to hide that back card. Maybe there is a way. I know that somebody took this and released it as a trick and called it his own thing. And although he gave me credit, he never approached me to ask me about it, which was a bit upsetting, but he came up with a solution where you cover the card up with your hand. Now, what I don't like about that, it removes the whole point of this as a transformation, as a color change that happens instantly, that happens right before your eyes. But maybe there's a, an answer, maybe you, you've challenging yourself and maybe you've found an answer that kind of works and cleans this up. Otherwise, it's just for, just for cameras, which again, please forgive me, please. Once you're at this point, once you peel back, when you snap that card, if you miss, you're gonna look like a bit of a fool. You're gonna look a bit strange. There are not many ways out of it, you know? Once you snap, and the card goes down, you might find that this happens. Now, if this happens, that means that your grip is too tight. The thumb is gripping those cards too, way too tight. If this happens, then obviously you're not gripping hard enough. The, the, they are the basic things that can go wrong with this. So once you're here, another thing that that's happened to me quite a few times, once you're up here and you snap, the card goes flying out of there and it just becomes a, a comedic event. Um, a little tip for practice and performance in the way that you're going to present this. When, uh, and I mentioned this briefly at the beginning, when you're in this position and you, you swing those two cards in a position, there's a little thing that I like to do where you get here and you pull forward with your thumb. Just a little bit of a nonsense move that, that allows the audience, the participant, the spectators to believe that Yes, that is only one playing card there. There's only one playing card. Swing up, do this, talk about the card maybe. So I'm gonna swing the card up. Look, I'm gonna take the nine of clubs and hold it on top of the deck like this. And all it takes is a snap of my fingers and the card goes flying over there on the floor and I'm left with the king of diamonds. <laughs> just a presentational note, I guess, of doing this and, and making it look like it's just one card. Again, you don't have to overprove that. Nobody's gonna question that you've got one or two playing cards there because they're not expecting anything yet. And to be honest, nobody's out to get you. You know, they're not out to to trash you as a magician and, and say, I know how it's done. He's on, He's got two playing cards. No one's out to do that. People want to be entertained. People want to be deceived. Obviously, from time to time, you're going to get sausage heads who want to ruin everything for you. But in your career and in your in your in your life in this through this art you're gonna learn how to pick the right people to show tricks to it becomes like an instinctive thing a bit like a gay da uh, maybe we can call that a sausage da no it doesn't make sense it's kind of the same thing <laughs> so once you're up here I pull back when my thumb is in this gap here I can I can afford to leave my hand in there for quite some time now this is one way of actually hiding that King of Diamonds, hiding that, hiding that card behind there because now all the funny angles are, are kind of out of the way. Now this is running before you're being chased but still looks like there's one playing card there nobody sees this at the back from this position. Um, I, at the same time as pulling my hand this way I snap my fingers allowing that change to, to take place. Another problem, yet another problem that can happen with this transformation is this when you snap here and the playing card index can be seen clearly right here giving away the actual method clearly telling everybody what you've just done now if that happens it means that you've just held the cards too far on this side that's an over exaggeration if anything you want to go more this way you want to go more over the other side of the deck like this like there so I'm either even even now that both cards are more this way than any other way so <laughs> again that was that was quite difficult to, to do over there I wouldn't probably wouldn't recommend that 
Um, but yeah, like like I said from the, at the start, you're gonna you're gonna learn all the challenges along the way. The best kind of practice for a thing like this, mirrors, mirrors, mirrors. I've surrounded myself with mirrors. That, you know, I'm filming in a mirror right now to give the illusion that this is a bigger place. Uh, I surrounded myself with mirrors so that I've got no excuses. I, I, I can. I'm always, always, 100% of the time that I'm in this room, I'm practicing in one way or another from an angle. Um, here's an interesting fact I'm always I'm always in gambler's cop always I'm not kidding always in gambler's cop always got a playing card in gambler's cop when I'm when I go for a walk when I go to the shops whenever I do anything and it's the best way to, to practice the gambler's cop because no one ever sees it no one ever sees it. I shake someone's hand with a gambler's cop um, there's no excuse for not practicing there's no excuse and it's such a small little item to carry around a deck of playing cards take them anywhere I, you don't leave home without them um, mirrors, mirrors, mirrors for this trick because mirrors are going to tell, are going to be honest. Mirrors are going to be honest, and you need to be honest with yourself. Don't do this on film. Don't do it anywhere until you're ready, until you feel like you're ready. I'm going to leave a link in this video description to the original publication, which was years back before I had tattoos, and I, I believe that in that explanation I didn't actually say anything. I think I just showed you the mechanics uh, from start to finish. I'm going to leave you there, and I'm going to come back. Now I wanted to start with this with this transformation because I have more transformations on the way which uh, which offer answers and offer solutions to the challenges of being surrounded. I have a color change on the way called color. If you know it, I've updated it. I have many more different ideas for color. And that's a color change that you can do completely surrounded. It's beautiful and I've updated it. For those people who know it, I've updated it. There are two new versions. I'm gonna leave you there with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Daniel Madison. Thanks for watching The Madison Show. I'll be back soon with Charlie Madison with some more card trick tutorials. See you next time.